We're doing a series, Time Spent with Jesus. It's my personal conviction that the only thing that's going to transform your life from the inside out, properly real transformation that lasts, come on, real transformation that gets you to the place that God wants you to get to is to spend time with Jesus. We have a lot of time. God gives us 168 hours every week to distribute as we please. And I am convinced and convicted that we have to give the biggest chunk that we possibly can to spending time with a Savior, spending time with the Lord. And uh, so we've been doing a series, Time Spent with Jesus. We looked at the life of Zacchaeus, who put himself in the way of Jesus. We looked at the Samaritan woman, who Jesus put himself in her path, which was awesome. The centurion was neither being pursued by Jesus nor pursuing him, yet his life was transformed. Peter was the fourth week. We saw how his life was transformed from the inside out. Then we saw Mary, the transformation in her life. John, how proximity caused uh, transformation in his life. Back to Thomas last week. And we saw how Thomas's faith and life was renewed. And so this morning, I found a passage that really speaks to us. For me, it's it's a kind of a look at how Jesus can transform us. And so I'm reading out of Luke uh, chapter 24. If you would turn there with me this morning, click on your phone, Google Luke 24, flick through the pages, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and um, get to chapter 24. And as I read through, just going to share some thoughts about how Jesus will, does, and can transform our life and change us into the thing that God wants us changed into. Who's got Luke 24? It's not a race, but I did get there before you. Luke 24. I'll start reading for us this morning at verse 13. And let's pray before we read. Father God, we ask you to open our ears, open our eyes, Lord, open our hearts right now, Lord. Lord, help us focus on what you're saying, Lord, not what any man or woman would say, but what you would say, Lord God. Lord, we believe your word has power in it for us today, Lord. We're ready to receive, Lord, some Uh, some blessings, some change, Lord God. We're ready to receive hope, Lord God. We're ready to be renewed, Lord, from the inside out as we hear your word preached, Lord. We love you. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to us to be our saviour, our Lord, and our friend. Amen. Amen. So Luke 24, 13, now that same day. So Jesus has uh, been crucified. He's gone into the tomb. Uh, he's come out of the tomb. Say amen, church. He's come out of the tomb, and uh, but not many people are aware of it. And so they're all dismayed that the person they thought was going to bring salvation to their world is gone. And uh, so these two guys are walking um, on a seven-mile walk and talking about uh, the shock, the discouragement, the disappointment, the confusion around what's happened in the death of Jesus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God, and all the people. I just want to stop there and just draw out this point. Cleopas said to Jesus, he was a prophet. 
Well, today I'm here to declare to you, He is a prophet. He's alive and He continues to speak. He continues to declare. He continues to decree things over our life, church. Come on. He wants to prophesy over your life this week, today, tonight, as you journey along. He is the prophet par excellence. If I want to hear from anyone in this world, I want to hear from Jesus. I want to hear what He has to say. Prophecy reveals the power and justice of God. As anyone with me, do you get discouraged sometime in this world? Sometimes I look at the state of the world, I think, God. But when I hear the voice of a prophet, the voice of Jesus, it reminds me of the power and the justice of God. It reminds me that God is going to restore all things, that God is making things all new, that God is building up the church, and that God is making a way for hundreds and millions and thousands of people to come into His kingdom because He is a God of justice, amen? And He wants to see that justice done. Prophecy strengthens our faith. How many times, uh, you know, do we really desire to see God moving and someone gives you a prophetic word? This is what the Lord is going to do in your life. And you see it unfold. Come on, church, this is exciting. You see it unfold and you see that faith is happening in your life. You see that God is moving in your life. Only Jesus can speak to you about the things that God is going to do in your world. And when He speaks and God does those things, we see God moving. Only a prophet can show us that God is moving by telling us these things. Prophecy prevents deception. I have got so many lies bouncing around in my head and in my heart. Do I have any friends at all in church this morning? There are things that are not right that make their way into my head and heart. And only a true prophet can divide truth from lies. And he can tell me what the truth of God is, remind me that thinking is wrong, and I can get that thinking out of my heart and out of my life. This is how we get transformed. When we see God moving, when someone prophesies over us, when Jesus makes a declaration over us, and we see that God is alive and He's moving. When we see that we were caught in a lie or we had thoughts about ourselves that weren't true, only a prophet can declare over us the truth of God. Amen. And Jesus is that living prophet. Prophecy influences our character and our conduct. So many days I have found myself doing things I shouldn't be doing, thinking things I shouldn't be thinking, and being engaged in things I shouldn't be engaged in church. Am I the only one who goes astray? Only the voice of a prophet can bring a lost sheep back to God. That's all the prophets did in the Old Testament. They called out to the people and said, you have made a covenant with God. What are you doing? <laughs> Come back to God. <laughs> Yield and, and bring yourself back to the feet of God. That's what prophecy does. It brings us back to the presence of God. We are all so good at wandering away from the presence of God. And a prophet calls out and says, why are you there when you belong there? This is the word of the, God, uh, word of the Lord to you this morning. And so we need a prophet active in our life to clean up lies, to see God moving, to hear truth, and to reform our character and our conduct. Sometimes I hear Jesus say to me, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you need to get yourself to the feet of your father right now. Only a prophet can see those things. You can hide stuff from people. We're so clever, eh? You can hide anything from people. You can hide nothing from a prophet. You can hide nothing from Jesus, the Son of God. And so he can call us back to the feet of God. Is it good? Prophecy facilitates God encounters because when a prophet says something over, how many of you know when you believe something, your actions begin to change? These guys were downcast, they were depressed, they were discouraged. All of a sudden, a prophet began to speak to them, amen? He began to open up the possibilities that God had uh, in, in store for them and their actions begin to change. They go from just walking through the dust and as we read, they're going to ask the prophet to come and stay with them. I know for a fact, church, when I hear the voice of Jesus, when I spend time with Jesus, when I hear him speak into my life, my actions change.
because my belief changes because I've heard from God. Amen. And so when we spend time with Jesus, we spend time with a living prophet. We spend time with someone who can speak powerfully into our world and see us come back to God, see our actions change, see our thoughts be renewed. Come on, this is good. We can see God moving and it proves to us that God is alive and well. Amen. And so we need to spend time with Jesus because He is the prophet that God has spent, uh, sent to us. So I'll read on. He said, what things? They said about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied, He was a prophet. Ha, he is a prophet, church. Powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and the rulers handed Him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified Him. But we had hoped that He was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen visions of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but Jesus they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Listen to this church. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Not only did Jesus begin to operate as a prophet and begin to reshape their thinking, he gave them revelation. He began to explain to them everything that God's Word had said concerning him. If you read down with me a little bit further, I think it's about verse 45. He says, then he opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. Come on. When you spend time with Jesus, you get a revelation. You don't only get prophecy and decrees and declarations over your life, you get an open mind and revelation. We can see what God's Word really is saying, church. You know, sometimes um, when we get caught up in this world and we fall in love with things in this world um, and we, we get bound or we join ourselves to things in this world, we need a revelation that God is doing something greater than what is happening in this world. Sometimes the devil says, I'm going to take everything off you. I say, good, you can have it. You can have it all. You can keep the whole world. And I'll sit back when God burns it up, and you too. <laughs> you can keep it. <laughs> God's going to make, because the truth, the Word of God reveals to us, God is going to renew everything. Come on, church. And so they're downcast, they're discouraged, and Jesus begins to talk to them about renewal in the Scriptures. He begins to show them revelation from inside God's Word. Is it good? Revelation gives us a clearer picture of who God is. That's what we need. Some of us have got bad pictures of who God is. We think God is someone that can be left in the corner. That is not true. We think God is someone who is against us. That is not true. We think God is someone that is not moving in the world. That is not true. And so we need revelation from in God's Word. And it says here, when you spend time with Jesus, He opens up what God's Word really says. He gives us revelation. It says their minds were open to it. And so we can receive that. Jesus called God Abba Father. Amen. What a great revelation to have. God is not God, someone up there. He's a father. Many of us need a good father right now. We need someone to love us. We need someone to put boundaries around us. We need someone to nurture us and feed us. Come on. And so Jesus revealed very clearly that it's not God. I actually don't love the word God. It's a weird generic word. Jesus said, Abba, Father, a father. Yeah, I need to father. <laughs> I need a good father, amen? I need someone to walk beside me when days are hard. A good father would do that, amen? A God, I don't know about, but a good father would do that. I need someone to embrace me when I feel alone. Come on. And Jesus began to reveal that God is Father, Jesus called God most high. Sometimes I feel like the most low. <laughs> Is it true? 
Sometimes I feel so broken. Sometimes I feel so frustrated. Sometimes I feel so disappointed. I feel like the most low. But Jesus revealed that God is the most high. And he's calling us to be with him. Amen. He's not just God. He's Father. He's not just God. He's most high. Jesus revealed all of these wonderful things. Come on. It's all within the scripture. Jesus called God the God of the living. We so think God is the God of the dead. Oh, I'm going to meet God when I die. No, you can meet God when you're alive. (laughs) You can have an encounter with God when you're alive. Jesus didn't meet God when he died. He met God when he lived. And we need to get that revelation. God is the God of the living. Come on. And so we need to get these revelations, and we get them from spending time with Jesus. Jesus called God Lord. I don't know about you, but I need someone to run my life for me. If he doesn't run it, it's a mess. If he doesn't run it, my race is not well run. If he doesn't run it, my life damages everybody else's life. Has anybody caused any damage to anyone before? Give us a little wave if you ever hurt someone, ever let someone down, ever discourage someone. When you have a, a Lord... When you have someone who can take over control of your life, they can say, don't do that. Don't think that. Don't say that. Don't walk there. Don't join yourself to that. Come away from that. You need to rest. Who's ever hurt someone when they're tired and cranky? Come on. When you have a Lord, he's like, you need to rest now. You need to rest fast because you're a wrecking ball right now. You need to come away. Sometimes we, um, we lose our way, but when we have a Lord, the, the word Lord means master. When we have someone who has the mastery of life, Jesus, they said when they watched him, uh, he said, this man does everything excellently. I would love to think that the things that happen in my life can be done excellently, but I have learned after 50 years, when I run my own life, they do not get done excellently. They get done tragically sometimes. But a Lord was revealed to us in Scripture. Jesus called God a great king. A great king. Isn't it good to know that we are subjects of a great king? Isn't it good to know that the king set up a kingdom? Isn't it good to know that the king paid the price for us to enter the kingdom? Isn't it good to know that the king wants us to serve in the kingdom and build the kingdom? Come on. Jesus said God was a great king. And so we are not just um, Christians. We are not just um, people as a part of a family or a community. We are subjects of a great king who is building a great kingdom that will reign forever. And we get to participate in that. And so Jesus revealed, I haven't got any more time, so many things about who God is to us. And we get that when we spend time with him. You can listen to good Bible teachers and I've got nothing, um, no issue with good Bible teachers. And I do teach the Bible myself But there is something supernatural when Jesus opens up the Scripture to you. When you read something, He says, look at that. And you're like, I've never seen that before in my life. And it changes you from the inside out. I never knew God was a Father until the day Jesus showed it to me. Amen? I never knew these things about the church. I didn't know these things about spiritual warfare until Jesus revealed them to me. Is it good? And so we need to spend time with him, not only that a prophet can work in our life, but also that we can get revelation in our world. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us? on the road and opened the scriptures to us. Church, these guys were downcast. 
They were discouraged. They were confused. And a little time spent with Jesus, they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he spoke with us? If you spend time with Jesus, he will set your heart on fire for the things of God. These men were just in such a bad place and just a moment spent with him. They had a prophet open up the reality to what God was doing. They had uh, a saviour open up to them what the word of God really says. And the blessing of prophecy and the blessing of revelation set their hearts on fire. If you spend time with Jesus, you will get the blessing of prophecy and the blessing of revelation in your life and your heart, which can easily die, which can easily get closed off, which can easily get distant, will get on fire, church. Remember, they were sad, they were, they were lost, and then after time spent with Jesus, they were full of passion. When you are burdened and you spend time with Jesus, He will unlock your burdened heart. I find my heart is the most difficult part of my life to keep clean and to keep fresh. We can easily get embittered. We can easily get judgmental. Come on, am I preaching to anyone here? We can easily get judgmental in our heart. We can easily get bitter in our heart. But I tell you what, time spent with Jesus is the only way to freshen up your heart. It's the only way. You can try and get online and have a laugh. You can try drugs or alcohol. You can do whatever you can do. There's only one thing that will clean and freshen your heart, and that's time spent with Jesus. When you're discouraged, He provides an outpouring. I have been so discouraged some days, and all of a sudden, joy has come on my life. And I don't know where it came from. Well, I do. It came from heaven. But there was nothing that I could do to lift the heaviness off my life. But time spent with Jesus, supernatural joy just came on my life. And all of a sudden, the whole world seemed different to me. When our hopes are shattered, He brings wonder. Have you ever had your, sh your hopes shattered? And all of a sudden, you just see things. You realize God can do greater than the things that have gone wrong. You begin to wonder again, what can God do in my life? When doubts arise, the truth of the resurrection drives them out. I have doubts and fears like you guys have doubts and fears. But when in my spirit, I capture the power of the resurrection, I think anything is possible for God. God can do anything, church. But only when we see the dead resurrected, the dead raised, only when we believe it, can we believe anything is possible. Because in our world, we think that death is the, the final thing. People say that death is the one thing that we can't escape. Yet Jesus has resurrected the dead. God is raising the dead. And so that is the one thing that drives out doubts and fears for me. And when you're defeated, He brings God's grace into your world to run again. I have been defeated many days. But I'm still here because of the grace of God. Because the grace of God says you can run again. You can get beside God and you can go again. Come on, church. Is anyone with me? We need to be able to get up and run again when we get knocked down, when we feel like we've lost out, or when we feel like the enemy has defeated us. Well, the grace of God comes on and says, I've got more. I've got more in store for you. You can run again. When ministry fails, the grace of God comes on you which is found in Jesus Christ and says you can run again. When a relationship falls apart, the grace of God comes on you and says you can build again. Come on, church, I'm speaking to you about the grace of God which comes through time spent with Jesus. When all of these things, brokenness comes, the grace of God comes and says I'll heal you, I'll touch your life and you can run again, church. We all need to get up and run again. We're all so good at looking back at the things that didn't work out, looking back at the issues that have held us back, 
looking back and seeing the sin in our life, but the grace of God comes when we spend time with Jesus and says, it's time for you to run again. I'm giving you a new day full of new grace. Amen. Why don't you stand with me as I pray? Father God, we just declare today that Jesus is a prophet who can show us God moving in our life, Lord. Father God, we declare today that Jesus is the revelation that can open up to us what Scripture really says, Lord, and we need Him in our life. And Father God, today, the only one who can set a heart on fire, the only one that can clean our heart, the only one who can free our heart from bitterness, the only one who can remove judgment from our heart is Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you that He is the bringer of God's grace. He is the one that will show us how we can run again. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, we ask you to show us how to use our 168 hours this week, Lord God. Father God, we ask you to open doors, Lord, open our mind, open our heart, open our eyes, Lord God, to how we can, Lord, spend time with Jesus this week. Lord, if we don't have the faith for it, show us who we can get with, Lord. Show us who we can get beside, Lord. Show us who we can, Lord, join ourselves to as they spend time with Jesus, Lord, that we can do it with them, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word to us today. Lord, we thank you for Jesus who will come alongside us, Lord God, like he came alongside the two men, Lord, discouraged on their way to Emmaus, Lord God. Wherever you are today, Wherever you are today, God wants to come alongside you. He wants to prophesy over you. He wants to give you revelation. And He wants to mend your heart and pour God's grace in. Lord, we thank you for today. We ask, Lord, that your work amongst us is not finished, Lord. That we continue to build on this today as we spend time together, Lord. And stir one another up for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Our redemption, our salvation is in His blood. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, His kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head.
So last week we prayed for our friends, our family and our loved ones that they would return to God or they would meet with God. This week I'm encouraging you, why don't you send a, a prophetic word of encouragement to someone? Come on, we all have Christ in us, don't we? Why don't you send a prophetic encouragement or declare something over someone's life this week? Or why don't you send them a scripture and maybe your little understanding of it and say, this is for you. This is to build you up. Amen. Why don't we just as a bit of homework this week, send something prophetic or send something from God's word to encourage one another. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great week. Keep praying for your loved ones. They're going to end up back here or in their local church because God answers prayer.